at Captain Rob defeats Josh Taylor the second time around. Hello, fight fans. Coach Nathan of NS Champ 7 Park Boxing Series and NSChamp7.com with a recap of the main event matchup in the junior welterweight division between former undisputed champion Josh Taylor, who is now 19 wins, 2 defeats with 13 knockouts, and his conqueror and number 5 ranked contender Jack Catterall, who is now 29 wins, 1 defeat with 13 by way of knockout. First off, I did a commentary after the first fight, which was two years ago, highlighting Taylor's uh, defensive liabilities, as witnessed by the repeated shots he took in and around his right eye. Now, he was taking those same types of punches in the two fights coming into the first Catterall fight. Now, two years later, nothing's changed. Same damage, same eye. Only this time, it was worse as Jack had him on the edge of a knockout. And a much more exciting fight, by the way. And um, he had him ready to go at least twice in this match, mainly in the 5th and 11th rounds. Top-ranked promoter Bob Arum had a mini meltdown over the, um, the closeness of the scorecards, or lack thereof, as two of them favored Catterall by a six-point margin and another by a three-point margin. Punch that numbers would suggest the match was also closer, as both threw and landed overall the same percentage of punches, which was 33 to 33%, and in power punches landed 45 to 44%. The close rounds could also be attributed to the fact that Jack seemed to run out of gas about the last five rounds of the fight, and he was getting hit. However, when he hit Taylor, it did far more damage and particularly when uh, Josh walked right into a hard straight left hand, leaving him badly hurt in the 11th round. Josh Taylor has now suffered back-to-back -back defeats, and he should definitely take some more time off to assess his future in boxing, and if he still has one. As for the winner, despite not winning the belts that were on the line in their first meeting, Catterall and his promoter, Eddie Hearn, they're in a prime position to challenge for either the IBF title held by the hard-punching Subriel Matias, who has 20 knockouts in his 20 wins, the WBO title held by the fast-fisted but hot-and-cold performing Teofimo Lopez, who, by the way, is who uh, Jack and his promoter prefers to fight, and there's also possibly a match against the WBA interim champ, and that's 41-year-old Ismail Barroso. A final note. Now, concerning the co-main event between undefeated cru cruiserweight contender, Jamaica's own, Siobhan Clark, who is now nine wins, zero defeats, with six knockouts, and Ellis Zorro, who is now 17 wins, two defeats, seven knockouts, I don't usually like to uh, criticize boxing folks, but... Why in the H-E-L-L would a trainer or manager allow a solid up-and-coming fighter like Zorro, who got knocked out somewhere around four months ago by the champ, Jai Obataya? And that was in the first round. Well, why would you just throw him back in against a hard-punching, undefeated contender, Clark, without fixing his flaws, only to get him knocked out again, this time in eight rounds? And if one says money is the reason, well, that's stupid because you make more money in winning than you do in losing. Maybe it's just me, folks, but it looks like it's time for the trainers and managers that they should be tested for drugs also, just like the fighters. So that's my take on this one, folks. But don't forget, for elite boxing instruction, elite boxing analysis, and elite boxing philosophy, click that like and notification button and subscribe to NS Champ 7 Part Boxing Series at nschamp7.com. And as always, I'll be seeing you the next main event.